Hello friends, Namaskar. In recent past, rather since last two, three years, the Income Tax Department India has been issuing notices to the non-resident particularly in terms of making the assessment in terms of their Indian income, their Indian investment, etc. But unfortunately, this exercise has troubled a lot to the non-resident fraternity because they feel that when they are investing in India, particularly when they are earning out of India, they have a connect with India and they are investing in India or I may rather say Bharat, then they feel harassed when an income tax assessment is opened against them. I would not comment upon whether such kind of assessment, my dear friends, is good or not. But through this particular video, I am trying to share with you my thoughts as to when, as a non-resident, you have an assessment opened up against you by the income tax department then how you should attend that assessment because there are various, I can say, confusions amongst the non-resident fraternity that whether an assessment against them is valid or not, can they not challenge such kind of assessment upfront or what are the consequences of an assessment, what is the process of an assessment, these are the various questions which I have tried to cover through this video one by one and the purpose is to serve the non-resident fraternity in terms of they being more knowledge in terms of attending an income tax assessment if it is opened up against them. So I will take you through further slides for more detailed discussion on the top. Now let me start my discussion with understanding the term tax assessment from the perspective of a non-resident. My dear friends, when I use the term tax assessment, it basically means that income tax department wishes to assess your total income for a particular financial year. And when I say that they wish to do it for a particular financial year, then in terminology of Income Tax Act 1961, how it happens that say they want to assess your income for the financial year 1920, then they will basically issue you notices for the assessment year 2021. So the assessment year runs one year ahead than the relevant financial year or they technically call it previous year. So if you have received a notice from income tax department for the assessment year 2021, it means income tax department is asking you to provide the information for the financial year 1920 in which they may ask you to submit the information regarding your income. They may ask you the information regarding your investments which you made in India, may it be in form of share, may it be in form of mutual fund, may it be in form of FDs, etc. So a tax assessment means that basically income tax department wants to know that whether you have paid the tax liability rightly on your income and you have the investments in India which are basically tax paid investment or they are not taxable investments in India. So that is a first and foremost purpose which you as a non-resident should understand by way of a tax assessment getting opened up against you in India. Now my dear friends, if you understand the term tax assessment, the question next comes to us how such assessment initiates? How as a non-resident you would know that an assessment is opened up against you? Sir, basically an assessment opening may be by way of a notice which is issued to you under section 143.2 of Income Tax Act 1961 or it may be by way of issuing you a notice under section 148a which further gets converted into a notice under section 148. Now to elaborate it more Precisely, I would say that if the department wishes to open up a recent financial year's assessment, they usually open it up under section 143.3. And if it is an old matter, they open it under section 147 with reference to a notice of section 148A. 
So if you receive either of these two notices, you can primarily presume that an income tax assessment is proposed to be opened up against you. However, when an assessment is opened up by way of a 148A, it does not mean that it will always convert into an assessment. This notice is very important. If in the procedure of 148A notice, you are able to establish that you have no income taxable in India, or your taxable India has been duly taken care of by way of filing the return or by way of making payment of tax liability thereon, then further assessment would not be taken up by way of issuing notice under section 148. So handling a 148A notice is very important for a non-resident. This is a very important perspective or I can say key takeaway of this video, which will be very important to the non-resident assessees at large. Now let's assume that an assessment has been opened up against you as a non-resident. The next question in your mind would be, okay, Mr. Bhatia, let me know what is the process of such assessment, which is very important. Nowadays, my dear friends, the assessment proceedings under the income tax law are faceless. First thing that they are faceless. Secondly, it means you need not to have a presence in India to attend the assessment proceeding. However, I would always advise you that even if you are not present in India and you can attend such assessment in a faceless manner, you should have a charter accountant, you should have a consultant or I may say tax advocate to present you or to present your case in the assessment. And he or she who is presenting you also need not to be physically present before the authority. The whole assessment can, can be handled through your tax log. So even if suppose a person like me is attending your assessment in India, you can view that what your council is representing on behalf of you before the authorities. And one more aspect that if you are a non resident mostly in the case of non residents, the assessment is handled by a specific wing, which is international taxation wing of the income tax department which has the specialized person to deal with the non-resident assessment only. Now, in this process of faceless assessment, how it happens basically, that first notice will be towards the opening up of the assessment, which as I said earlier, could be 143-2 assessment or could be a 148A notice, which will further convert into a 148 notice, etc. Once that assessment notice has been received, if you have not filed the return earlier, they will ask you to file the return. Particularly when a notice under section 148 is issued, you will be specifically asked to file the return for the relevant financial year. Even if you are saying that, look, my income for the relevant financial year was nil in India, you are liable to file the return of income in India. Once you file the return of income, that means that you are cooperating to the income tax department. Then department may further issue your notice under section 142.1 or under section 143.2 further. And through these notices, they will ask you to submit the information on their queries. So in the process of assessment, how it happens that through mails and you your income tax login, they will keep you issuing the notices which you are supposed to respond to them as and when they issue you such notices and it is very important to respond to such notices because if you will not respond to such notices, then they will issue you a show cause notice under section 144. And this is very dangerous notice, my dear friend. When there is a show cause notice issued by the income tax department, it means that the department will be completing your assessment based on whatever information they have and as per their best judgment then it also means that basically they are saying that look you have not submitted us the information required and suppose for an example a nri person has 50 lakh rupees investment in india which he is not explaining during the course of assessment department may issue him or her a show cause notice saying that look you are not explaining this 50 lakh rupees why not we should treat this 50 lakh rupees as your income taxable india so this is really very really dangerous and now you can understand that, okay, the gravity of reply, proper reply from your side to the income tax department is highly, highly important. So this question, 
whether providing of document to the income tax authority is essential. See why I am putting up this question again specifically here, even if I have tried to answer this in my previous slide, that sometimes the non-resident get an impression that look, whatever I have invested in India is out of my foreign income. That is not taxable in India, I am very sure. So whatever investments I have made in India, they are not earning any taxable income, particularly when you are having only NRE deposits in India. But unfortunately, my dear friends, income tax department does not have the source that you have invested only through foreign proceeds and your deposits in India are NRE deposits. They have simply an information in their database that look X person has invested one crore in India. Whether or not he or she is a resident or non-resident, that too they don't know. They know it only after you file their you file your return in India. So if somebody says that look, I am a non-resident, I am not at all taxable in India, and now you close my assessment, this kind of approach, in my opinion, does not work. You have to establish by way of providing them your passport, visa details. You have to establish by way of your bank statements that remittance have been from in India from out of India. You have to establish that my Indian income is not taxable at all. So once you establish that, then you can expect a nil assessment. But merely by continuing to say that you are a non-resident or maybe on your income tax login portal, you have changed your status from a resident to non-resident because uh, when you have earlier done a login or you have obtained a PAN, that time you were a resident, but today you may be a non-resident. So that is not a significant factor that you are simply updating your status as a non-resident on the portal that will save you from assessment. You have to provide the specific documents or details which are required by the income tax department and they will throw towards you in form of notice that look, we have following information in our possession. You explain them. So you are supposed to explain. And one thing more, many a time when income tax department presumes certain information from their database, it has a duplicacy. You need not to worry about that duplicacy if you will be able to explain that, look, I have only 50 lakh rupees as deposit. Might be bank has reported you twice. So due to which it is appealing to be one crore in your database. So you need not to worry about that. You have to get the certificate from the bank and upload it on the site along with a proper reply. So this is how providing of document to the income tax authority, my dear friends, is very much essential. Now I come to a very important process part of your assessment as a non-resident that will you receive a draft assessment order? You may ask me, Mr. Vatia, what is the meaning of the term draft assessment order? Sir, you can understand the meaning of the term draft. The draft is not final. So when income tax department issues you a draft assessment order, that is the international taxation wing, it is the requirement of law on them that they have to first give you a draft order that look, Mr. Bhatia, you are a non-resident and we are giving you this draft assessment order based on the information which you submitted. There, if it is a draft assessment order, you have two options. Either you may agree with such draft order or you may disagree with such draft order. If you agree, they will convert this draft order into a final order. Okay. And if you do not agree, then what will happen? Then you have an option that against a draft assessment order, you can raise the objection to a forum called DRP, Dispute Resolution Panel. This I will explain further. So you get an option to file your objections before a forum called DRP, Dispute Resolution Panel. Then DRP will listen to you again that, okay, whatever are the objections of yours against a draft assessment order, after listening to you, they will give certain directions to jurisdiction AO that, you know, as per our understanding, this is the case of the assessee and you handle the assessment in the following manner. So, again, I would reiterate, either you will agree with the draft assessment order, or you will disagree in form of filing objections before the DRP. So these two steps or these two alternatives are very important for you to know. So now when I have already discussed that can a draft assessment order be challenged, you have already answered to this question 
that a draft assessment order can very well be challenged before the DRP. One very important point, my dear friend. Suppose a draft assessment order somehow could not be challenged because it is needed to be challenged within 30 days of the receipt of such draft assessment order before the DRP and a copy of the same should also be filed with the EO. Suppose you miss that deadline and the draft assessment order is finalized, then also don't worry. Then after the expiry of that 30 days time limit, if the draft order is finalized by the EO as per the requirement of section 144C of Income Tax Act, then you can file an appeal to the CIT appeal. So you have two ways. Either you can file objections against the draft assessment order before the DRP dispute resolution panel. Or if you could not file your objections and an assessment order which was draft order has been finalized, then you can file an appeal before the CIT appeals. So these are the two alternatives which are available to you as a non resident Now, my dear friends, when I'm discussing with you DRP, here, I would simply like to say that why the DRP forum has been initiated. The DRP forum is a thought process under which the government is saying that if the assessee, like in your case, if you are a non-resident, you are not satisfied with the order that is draft assessment order of the EO, then you can file your objections against such draft assessment order before the DRP by giving a copy of such objection to the assessing officer so that he does not convert his draft assessment order into a final order. So this DRP, DRP is a collegium of three CITs. So which are the one of the experienced officers of the income tax department. So this collegium of three CITs will hear to your case, listen to your case, and they will, after considering the complete facts of your case, decide that whether the EO is doing proper action, proper assessment in your case, or there are certain gaps in his assessment order. So if there are certain gaps in his assessment order, then the DRP will give him the direction that look, you complete the assessment in light of the following facts which we have heard. So this is how the DRP forum is also very important for you when you are an honest. Now, my dear friends, the next question is, can final order be challenged? Now here, the final order could be under the two scenarios. One, when you have not objected to the EO's draft order and that has been finalized, probably you have missed to object within the 30 days, that could also be one scenario. Or you have objected before the DRP. When you have not objected before the EO, but you wanted to do, Suppose you are agreeing with the EO's final order, then nothing to worry about, then you need not to object. But if you are wishing to object to the EO's final order and you have not approved to the DRP, then you have to move an appeal to the CIT appeal. When your case has moved to the DRP and DRP has issued the direction, but you are not satisfied with the directions of the DRP, which are given to the EO, let the EO finalize his order according to the DRP direction. And then you can move an appeal to the ITAT, Income Tax Appellate Tribunal. So these are the two alternative modes which will be available to you for seeking further remedy, my dear friends, when in your case, an assessment order is passed by the Income Tax Department. Now one last but not least discussion, which is very important. What if the panel consequences are initiated? Sometime, my dear friends, when an income is added, despite you are not agreeing to such income addition, the income tax department initiates the penalty proceedings against the assessee. So say for example, in the case of non-resident, certain 20 lakh rupees deposit was treated to be taxable in India, whole amount. Non-resident was not agreeing to the same, but income tax department is wishing to tax the same. And in their final order, they are proposing this 20 lakh rupees to be unexplained deposit and hence wanting to make an addition in the hands of the assessee and hence they have in their assessment order added that amount in the total income of assessee. Now, as I said earlier, the assessee will either move before CIT appeal when there is a final order passed by the EO without there being the process of DRP. And when there is a process of DRP, even DRP has not heard the assessee's case or they have not agreed to the assessee's case properly, then in that case, you have to move to the ITAT. In the meanwhile, what happens for this addition, income tax department will issue you a notice for treating such income to be 
under reporting of income or misreporting of income and which is done under section 270a of income tax act if you are moving in appeal you can request income tax department to keep the penalty proceeding on hold till the disposal of appeal this is a very important aspect which will be helpful to you and i can say it's a very important contribution in this video which may help and once your appeal is decided suppose if it is decided in your favor then ultimately that penalty will be automatically set aside but if you lose in appeal suppose you lose in appeal before cit appeal then you have to move into ITAT. Suppose you lose an appeal before ITAT, then you have to move to High Court. So that is also one procedural hierarchy which I have tried to explain for your benefit. At the end, my dear friends, I can understand that as a non-resident, it is really very critical for a person sitting outside India to cooperate with the income tax authorities in India, particularly when now you don't have that kind of a sync with the Indian tax laws or procedures. But unfortunately, when an assessment is opened up in your case by the income tax authorities of India, you have no other option but to cooperate, but to provide the information. And it would always be advisable that if you have a proper representative of yours, that is a professional who can handle your case in India. And that will further add, I can say, a kind of helping tool to you understand the whole gamut and accordingly putting up your case in a proper manner before the authorities. So never think like this that if you are a non-resident, you are not taxable in India. If you have Indian investment which are gaining income for you, I would always advise you keep filing returns in India and that is one very important key takeaway of this video. So with this kind of thought process, with this kind of uh, I I can say that I've tried my level best to brief you about the tax procedures. If you have any queries, you can write to me also. Thank you very much, my dear friends, for being with me, sparing time with me. Wishing you all the best. Jai.